Hey everyone, this is Kieran, and I just wanted to share a quick video with uh, some stuff I've been doing live coding microcontrollers. Um, for those who don't know, the ESP32 is actually a target for an, uh, a JavaScript interpreter, an uh, interesting project called Esperino, and a smart guy named Mike Fikes had a talk at Closure North not too long ago that showed off the fact that we can just run ClojureScript on top of Esperino, which is frankly pretty incredible. Um, so I've been working on this project a little bit for a couple weeks now, and I've got to a point where the workflow is really quite nice. And I just wanted to show off a little bit using Emacs to do that, and how I've got things set up uh, using CIDR and some utilities here. So first off, I wanna show, I, I've modified a little bit of the uh, Esprit, that's the name of the project for the ClojureScript stuff, um, to work with CIDR, and I'll, I'll post all the code for this as well. But if I'm in a project, uh, just normal ClojureScript project I have open in Emacs, um, I can just jack into ClojureScript, and I have a dir locals file set up so it already knows to do a couple of things with CIDR. Uh, one of those is I have to turn off uh, Closure Pretty Print. It's too big of a dependency, so I just have to uh, use PR instead. But if you just set that in your dir locals and tell it to connect to um, Wi-Fi using an endpoint address, as you can see here uh, in the do form, uh, we can use the Esprit REPL environment to just connect with CIDR. And so you see when you get a normal CIDR prompt here and like we can run code, you can probably see the blinking lights going, but we can literally just <laughs> evaluate code straight on the microcontroller which is pretty incredible. So if I have a project open here, uh, I'm controlling this vacuum fluorescent display. I'm working on a project called HackerHUD. Little IoT, um, cool looking retro display that I'm gonna display like, I don't know, weather and time and maybe a Bitcoin ticker or something like that. And I've been live coding it and watching my results as I'm coding it. So if I evaluate this buffer here um, and then wait a little bit as it sends all that data over, I can then just wait for it to finish. Yep, get a nil. I can just change the namespace. I grab the core. I have a couple other files for some utilities, and I separated controlling the VFD as its own thing, and you know what have you. But I can just kind of run code in the VFD namespace. Actually, I can call uh, the function called command, and I can send clear, clear the display. Maybe we can display hello. And so this is pretty handy. And I have a couple other things set up here, such as getting some weather using a get request over an API and uh, updating the system time, that kind of stuff. And so all of this is actually just working over Wi-Fi. I have a cable plugged in to the uh, Esprit board right now, but it's actually communicating with my REPL just over a Wi-Fi connection. But if I, in my, I think I was in utils, called set new time, might as well update the system time, and then utils, uh, I think I called it get format, yeah. Let's get formatted time, and yep, yeah, that's right. And I'll just update the weather as well while we're at it. Ah yes, set new weather. Cool, but that's sort of an atom, so we can just look at the current weather. And it's hot in Florida here, but that was the result of just doing a get over the Wi-Fi, and I just read it into a nice closure data structure. So it's really like as if we are just programming closure. Like it it feels the same except it's all running on this hardware here, and we got a bunch of nice blinking lights. So what I have set up now is I have a couple of functions that are pages on the VFD. I'm calling them day page, time page, weather page here. And so if I call that function, like day page, you can see that I get some description about the current day. And if I uh, clear the display and look at time page, you, know, you get the current time, you know, that kind of stuff. Um, I want to cycle through these. So I have an 
uh, a vector of all the pages and an atom to keep track of which page we're on, and a little function that will um, cycle through them and display it, clears the display and calls that page function for the current page, and then you know mods go, it just you know cycles through that list. So if I call update page and I call it again, call it again, you know it cycles through. So I can just use set interval here to uh, call that function every, let's make this even smaller, let's make it five seconds. Five seconds. And then I can just evaluate that. And you can see that, there we go. And so this is just running right now. And I used a macro uh, to wrap set interval with some quoting stuff so I can actually update you know things as they're running, but say like oh I don't like uh, what it says. Oh, this is actually running an old build, um, and say it says weather on here for the weather thing, and I want it to say outside is instead. I can just evaluate this function, and then reevaluate that vector it's in, and then by the time it wraps around again, it will be. Updated, there we go. So I, the code is running and I can just live code it as we're going. And so uh, let's, I wanna show off implementing like just a new feature. This is some code I already have you know, written in the VFD code, but say we, we wanna add even more functionality to this. Um, I have a uh, little light sensor here. It's a little board I got from some kit and it returns an analog value uh, from zero to one, depending on the ambient light conditions. And unfortunately, this uh, Esprit board doesn't have the ADC pins broken out, but I just soldered a pin to the, <laughs> to the module there, so now I have an ADC pin. And so because we, we can just interrupt with JavaScript, I can just call those Esperino commands on that pin, D35. So get some value there. If I hold my finger over the sensor, Call it again. You can see that the value is going to drop. So let's let's change the brightness of this display based on ambient light conditions. So I already have a function in here called uh, set brightness. Set brightness. We can set this to one. You can see you got dimmer. It might be hard to see over the webcam, but we can change the brightness, and we can just do this once again as that other piece of code is running. So I'm actually going to switch files here over to my utilities and just write a new uh, function. Well, first I want to save that pin, right? So we can define that pin because we want to get away from the JavaScript stuff and evaluate that. So now we have light sensor, go. And now I'm going to write a function called get light. It's going to take in, this is just a side effecting function, so it doesn't take in any arguments. We want to, uh, I found out that sometimes that analog read actually returns undefined if the value is too low. So we're gonna call, we're gonna use an if let to get to a brightness and uh, let's call it value and then use that analog read on light sensor. And if it's a value, we just give it a value. If not, return zero. So now we can uh, we can change namespaces here to utilities. We don't have to qualify it. But if we get light, get our value. And if I hold my finger over it again, you can see that it went down. Cool. So now that we have access to this value, I'm going to go back to my original file. And let's update that brightness. So I have a function, uh, update brightness. It also takes in nothing, side effecting. And we're going to grab that light value from that function, get light. And we are going to do a couple things depending on its value. So we'll use a cond. Um, if that light value is greater than 0 0.1, seems to be a good value for me. I mean, you can see it, it was about three, 0.33 now and 0.013 when I put my thumb over it. So it sounds like a good enough value. We'll call that VFD 
set so brightness command uh, of four. Set so it to bright if it's bright out. And then we can do a you know an else case here. Uh, set brightness to one. So evaluate that. Come down here. Day bright. Oh, we're still in utilities. Um, change namespace to hacker HUD core. Date brightness. Didn't do anything, right? And if I call it again, put my finger over the sensor, you can see it got dark. And then take my finger off, call it again. Now it's bright. So obviously, you want that to happen in real time. So we'll just call set interval date brightness any second now there we go and let's do it i don't know every second so call that now it's running and if i just hold my finger over this you can see it will change the brightness so this is really cool um i'm having a lot of fun playing with this and having that instant feedback from working with hardware is kind of game changing for me for uh, embedded development like this. And especially coming from uh, getting used to working in a REPL enclosure, it, it's pretty awesome. So I hope you guys like this. And please check out the Esprit project where this is kind of all culminating. And like I said, I'll post all the code for what I'm doing if you want to try this out for yourself. All right, thanks everyone.